here today to honor our founder, Dr. Carol Weiland Connor, for her leadership in responding to the needs of those so devastated by the terrible campfire. Dr. Connor is expected to join us during the program today. Because she had back surgery recently, her doctors have advised her not to sit for too long, so during the program, she'll just slip right in and join us. Today, AARP is going to bestow on Dr. Connor their most prestigious Andrus Award for that work. We're also here to express our deep gratitude to the White Pony Express volunteers and staff who've made such a difference in the lives of thousands and thousands and thousands of people who are in need, as well as the lives of the survivors of the campfire. We have a number of special guests today, and if when I call your name, if you just wave your hand and then we'll uh, move on. Uh, Matt Wren, Mayor of Pleasant Hill. Ken Carlson, Council Member, City of Pleasant Hill. Teresa Geringer, Council Member, City of Lafayette. Eduardo Martinez, Council Member, City of Richmond. Georgia Scudia, District Director, Office of State Senator Steve Glazer. Colleen Eisenberg, District Representative, Supervisor Karen Mitchoff. Samantha Ituralde, Field Representative, Office of Assembly Member Timoth Grayson. Ryan Thomas Brown, District Representative for Congressman, Congressman Mark DeSaulnier. Ramona McIntyre, President and CEO, Pleasant Hill Chamber of Commerce, Delano Johnson, founder and president, all-in-one Bay Point nonprofit, Charles David, VP, all-in-one Bay Point nonprofit, Tom Dearmore, community services manager, community action agency of Butte County. <gasps> <sighs> <laughs> Thank you all for joining us and for your incredible support for White Pony Express. So let's begin our program. Many times music and song can help us communicate more fully and more deeply our, the meanings of things and our feelings. So we are really happy today to have with us a White Pony Express volunteer and donor, Misha Rutenberg, who will sing an original song that he wrote about the survivors of the campfire and about the transformation that happens when we lend a hand to one another. Misha. Thank you, Mary. And this has a very simple refrain. Uh, if you're inclined, you can join it. If you're not inclined, I demand it. <laughs> Go ahead. Lai lai di lai da, la da di la la da. It's time that we all try, come and show some kindness. When we lend a hand, we will learn what love is. For when all is said and done. The truth is we're all one Cold and tired, no one to call In the blink of an eye I lost it all No clothes, no bed, nothing to eat You came along, helped me on my feet I was falling and I couldn't stand You arrived with a helping hand with water, food, and clothes, and love in your eyes. May we all see and realize it's time we all try. It's time that we all try. Come and show some kindness. When we lend a hand, we will learn what love is. But when all is said and done, but when all is said and done, the truth is we're all one. It wasn't for the news and it wasn't for the fame. Day after day after day you came. Driving all morning and working all night. You gave it your all for those in flight. Spirit growing, lighting hearts. To join this work and play our parts to help one another in our times of need. 
this is the way we all succeed. It's time that we all try. It's time that we all try. Come and show some kindness. Come and show some kindness. When we lend a hand, we will learn what love is. For when all is said and done, the truth is we're all one. Yeah, it's time that we all try, come and show some kindness. When we lend a hand, we will learn what love is. Repeat that part. That we all try, come and Show some kindness when we lend a hand. We will learn what love is. When all is said and done, the truth is we're all one. helps set the tone, doesn't it? So we are here today in the White Pony General Store, and you may wonder what goes on here and how exactly does the store work. So I've asked the store's manager, Steve Harrell, to say a few words about how the store works. Steve? As you can see, all around you, thousands of new and like new items of clothing, books, shoes, toys and games. And we, we gather these items to, make, to give to those who are in need, our neighbors in need. And those neighbors could be people who are homeless, those who are impoverished neighborhoods or those who are living on the edge. We also give them these items through a mobile boutique. We stage 62 of them. And we create an atmosphere of happiness with music playing. And we actually have lots of de decorations with balloons around as well. We also have wardrobe consultants to help people choose items that they feel that they would like for church, a PTA meeting, or for a job interview. We help all of those. Also, we do community warming centers with our cold weather clothing program. We help those who are homeless. As you all know, oftentimes, the shelters are closed during the day, and people use libraries as warming centers. So we've partnered with the Contra Costa Library and given them emergency backpack kits, which includes blankets, Marlar blankets, those are the ones that EMT people use. We give them um, a hygiene kit. We also give them umbrellas. We give them a rain suit. We give them things to sort of keep them warm for the night, and hopefully they can get through another day. We also distribute 500,000 items. So we give away tons of, of items, and we want all people who come for the free is what we give them away to. So, Mary? So the, our general store, where we are today, is part of the larger White Pony Express nonprofit organization, or WPE for short. Dr. Connor, who we're honoring today, created WPE when she learned that many of our neighbors don't have enough resources to feed the fa their families or, or to purchase warm clothing for the winter or clothing for a job interview. And nonprofit groups and shelters in this county often don't have enough resources to help them. And we have over 70 nonprofit partners that we work with. If you've heard of someone in Contra Costa County, we're probably partnering with them. But Dr. Carner also knew that we live in a county of great abundance. For example, uh, food markets need to move out large volumes of good food to make room for new supplies. Clothing retailers have surplus off, uh, goods in off seasons. So she created the White Pony Express to pick up all the abundance from those who have more than they need and deliver it to those who have less than they need. And we like to say, always delivered with love. We began in 2013 with just a few volunteers and an $800 budget. And the most important thing, Dr. Connor's vision to help guide our way. 
now less than seven years later, we've rescued and delivered more than 10 million pounds of fresh, nutritious food that otherwise would have gone to landfills. This food now has provided 8.3 million meals to people in our county who otherwise would have gone hungry. <clears throat> We operate seven days a week. Every single day, we pick up and deliver over 7,000 pounds of high quality, largely perishable, fresh surplus food, all given away for free. We recently, I want to call this out because you have some volunteers here from Food Rescue and some staff from Food Rescue. Recently, we had our largest food delivery, uh, food rescue day ever, bringing in and delivering out in the same day, 18,000 pounds of food. Now this food doesn't go just to other, uh, our partner agencies, but also one program that we're most excited about, and that's our school pantries program. We now have 11 school pantries set up around the county delivering food to young students and their families where most of the children qualify for the free school lunch program. This provides food security in families across our county where before there was none, and where previously the children often only had one meal a day. As a 501c3 organization, White Pony Express is governed by a board of directors, and several of our members, uh, our board members, are here today, so I'd like to um, just ask you all to stand, and then we'll give you a little applause. <laughs> Having been on the board myself, I know they work really hard. Uh, now we'd like to share with you the very real drama that's the background to the honor that AARP is bestowing on Dr. Connor today. The devastating Northern California campfire in 2018 killed 85 people and destroyed over 18,000 buildings. Practically overnight, it left thousands of people homeless and destitute with no assured sources of food, clothing, or shelter. Their shock and trauma was really overwhelming. And to give you a better sense of what the survivors went through, we're going to show a five minute video about the fire in the town of Paradise. It's taken from the PBS series, Frontline. Uh, let's begin. Paradise, there's something about it. It's healing to be here. You never felt more safe than out there in the mountains. My phone illuminated said there was a vegetation fire in the canyon. Came out of the community of Pogan to get a better look at it. And the spot fires that were not a big deal at the time started engulfing both sides of the road. The homes, the homes are becoming involved. Ready, ready, ready. But the campfire was now spreading at a rate of 80 football fields a minute. The smoke, swirling with burning pine needles and pieces of houses, turned day to night. An area would catch on fire, homes would catch on fire generating heat, which would throw more embers, that would start another fire. In a typical fire, the smoke travels straight up, where cooler air puts out most of the embers. But in this fire, winds high up of up to 100 miles an hour were blowing the embers sideways. Is it safe to stand here like this? I'm really safe anywhere. We just get in the car and we can't even pull out because there was cars all the way down. You couldn't even get on the road. Oh, there's a power line in the road. Everything was red. Everything just seemed like panic. I feel the heat, dude. I'm literally so scared. I really want to make it. I started freaking out because the fire's coming at us and I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to feel it. Like, I didn't want to be there. I just kind of wanted to disappear because I couldn't believe this was happening. Like, I didn't understand why not everyone was flooring it. Like, we were all about to burn alive. Like, why is it everyone, like, full speed ahead? Like, why are we stuck? Like, why? How? And put everybody out. Here's an assault. They'll need to stop all traffic. Please get people moving now. 
and I'm on, my, on the phone with my husband, and I'm screaming for him. I'm like, Nick, you gotta get to me. You have to hurry, because I'm not gonna make it. And he said, I'm trying. I'm gonna get to you. And I'm like, I'm gonna die. And I'm, I'm so sorry. The road's completely engulfed in flames. And I told my husband, I'm like, the car's filling up with smoke. I have to get out of the car. And he's like, get out and run. And I'm like, I can't get out and run. You don't understand, there's fire everywhere and I can't run through fire. And he said, you're gonna have to. I just was thinking, please let there be a vehicle or something that I can jump into because I was so hot at that point. And I ended up touching the back of a fire engine and I'm like, oh, yay, a fire engine. <laughs> It took only four hours for Paradise to be destroyed. By the end of the day, 50,000 people had managed to escape, scattering to neighboring towns. There was literally a point on the road where it went from hell to there was a sky again, and there was air to breathe, and it was this type of feeling that changes your whole entire life. I just got this chance to be able to live again. My mom took us back to the house that my kids were staying at. And I just grabbed onto my husband, and I'll never forget what he said. He said, I thought I almost lost you. And I'm like, I know. Paradise burned for over two weeks. Finally, the first winter rains came and put the fire out. It was the most destructive fire California had ever seen. Around 30,000 people lost their homes. basis they all felt just abandoned because they're sitting there in limbo nowhere to go no money no shelter no food they can't get jobs they it's just a lot of them have their vehicles burned down no transportation and with this profound background now I'd like to introduce Issa Campbell she is our chief operating officer at the time of the fire and she will tell us the story of how Dr. Connor, who that was powerful, wasn't it? <laughs> got us started on the journey to help the survivors. Issa is the one who nominated Dr. Connor for this award. Issa. Hello, everyone. Shortly after the campfire, Dr. Connor contacted me and asked me if we could immediately start delivering food and clothing to the survivors. Now we all felt, or many of us felt keenly, the loss in paradise. My sister and brother-in-law lost their home, a beautiful home, and everything in it. But even with this, I didn't think that we could on any kind of regular basis take food to people who were more than three hours away. But Dr. Connor felt strongly that we needed to support our neighbors to the north. She mobilized volunteers to deliver food, clothing, and cash that she would give. As a psychologist, she recognized that these people would be suffering shock and trauma and that they would need more than food and clothing. And with these gifts of cash, she wanted to send a silent message. Let me read a quote from her, the silent message of our warm and communal regard and love, end of quote. Now our donors who donate the food were very happy to help. And I don't know if you're aware, but Starbucks, I don't know if it's nationwide, but certainly in California, sends trucks out every day to pick up the unsold goods. And every morning, one of those trucks comes to White Pony Express at about 5 a.m. and unloads the food into our refrigerators. The Starbucks food is perfect because it's ready to eat, it's fresh, 
and the people that got it did, could had no other way to cook. So it was a perfect thing. So I wanted to give a shout out to them. The following, I think it was the second following Sunday, my husband and I drove one of our WPE vans loaded with food and clothing up to Chico. And I want to paint a picture for you here because imagine this little city filled with smoke, uh, as most of the state was. In addition, there were helicopters. There was the National Guard, there was media, there were celebrities, and there were thousands of trucks pouring into this city with every conceivable good you could think of. And here we were in our little van. Well, we were not welcomed by FEMA or the Red Cross or others, primarily because they have strict guidelines about what you do during a disaster, and working with us wasn't one of them. But several, and so I told Dr. Connor this because I thought we were pretty superfluous and that we didn't need to go. And her, her comment to me was, keep going, we will be needed. Well, she was absolutely right. A few days later, we found out that not all these people ended up in Chico where there was plenty of food. They were in these mountain villages that you probably all heard of, like Yankee Hill, Concow, Brownsville. Um, pretty soon it became, we got in touch with these uh, people that had helped them get there, and we started delivering food to people in these remote locations. So we obviously were needed. Um, what was interesting is that we had continued to try to work with FEMA, and then um, they, they, about three months in, started putting up their trailer parks and housing people, because up to that point, these people were really living in tents, and I don't know if you remember all the rain that we had. Anyway, they got them into trailers, and then they realized they had no way to feed them. I didn't know that FEMA didn't do food, but they don't. So they contacted us, and they said, can, yeah, can you deliver to our trailer parks in Yankee Hill, and they named a bunch of places, and we said, sure. So we did that for the over 10 months that we were sending food up to the fire. So we ended up working with them very well. This is kind of funny. Uh, here's, a, here's a short video about a volunteer who worked with us during this time. I connected with White Pony Express, and the food, what it also did for them on emotional and mental basis was just as important as a physical because I've never seen a grown man cry when I handed him a box of food because yes, he gets to eat another day or three or four days, but it showed him that there was people that cared, that he wasn't alone. The cash donations that White Pony Express brought wasn't just the money itself. What that did again just to show them that people cared. Okay, here's some slides and pictures. This is the type of van I was talking about that we drove up and you can see the fresh food that's laid out for people. These are some of the survivors picking from a selection of various kinds of food that were brought. This box of food actually came from the North State Food Bank. Uh, we had begun, a, we'd wanted to collaborate with Food Bank for a long time here, but hadn't been able to. But we were able to do it, thanks to Tom Dearmore, with North State Food Bank. So we picked up his food that he had and delivered it to people out in these remote locations because, as I said, they had no way to get in. This is a woman with some fresh eggs for those that had to cook. It was a nice staple for their diet. And then we also had hard-boiled eggs from Starbucks for those who couldn't cook. This is Judith Parker and volunteers handing out special treats that Dr. Connor had prepared for them from time to time. Judith was one of our key volunteers in this effort. This last photo shows two of our volunteers and Tom Dearmore, the head of the North State Food Bank, along with his program director, Lee Wells. Tom is here with us today and we look forward to hearing Tom say a few words. Tom? Good morning. I'm glad I didn't have to follow that first video. Boy, that was sure choked me up. Um, the morning of November 8th, when I arrived at the food bank, I, I saw this huge plume of smoke just over the rise, and I called my wife and I said, honey, there's, there's some smoke close. Keep an eye on it. I had no idea just what the next uh, several months and, and continuing to this day would bring to us. The North State Food Bank serves six counties uh, surrounding that fire that you just watched. 
we are the food bank. We supply 52 food pantries in the area. We weren't contacted by FEMA. FEMA contacted uh, you guys clear down here in the Bay Area, and uh, we were really logistically having a, a struggle getting food uh, to the survivors. They were spread out. Many didn't go to shelters. Most were doubled and tripled up with friends and family. We didn't know quite where they were, and FEMA wouldn't tell us. They said that was confidential. We just wanted to get food to them. So we were doing our best with some pretty limited resources, and then one day out of the blue, I got a call from Judith Parker, White Pony Express. Never heard of White Pony Express. And in they came like, like a white pony, you know? They just, <laughs> they, they came in in these vans, and they were so organized, and they had volunteers that I wish I could get paid employees that were as good as these volunteers. And so we were able to uh, supplement what White Pony was bringing up with offerings of our own. And because of that effort, we, we reached many, many more people than we would have been able to otherwise. I, I just also want to mention that it was more than food. Um, at the food bank, we typically don't have uh, much more time or, or personnel than it takes to drop food off and go to the next stop. White Pony didn't do that, and they were just as busy or busier than we were. They stopped and they, they tried to understand people and they tried to make a connection with people and they fed them in ways that was more than food. And people still talk about White Pony up there. It, you'd think that it was a local organization, uh, not 110 miles away, but you made a a huge difference in our community, and we're very grateful. We, we couldn't have done all we did without you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. You've been a great collaborator, and we look forward to more, hopefully under happier circumstances. Mm -hmm. I mentioned some of these towns that you probably hadn't heard of. One of them was Concow, and Concow is a beautiful place, but it was completely wiped out by the fire. If I had time, I could tell you some amazing stories about the people there. We started delivering food to them. It's pretty much out you know, in the sticks, in the hills, but it's gorgeous. And we started delivering food to the back of the hardware store there that managed somehow, miraculously, to stay standing. Um, we noticed after about three or four months that people were still struggling to maintain a kind of balance in their lives. So Dr. Connor, at Easter time, thought, well, let's do an uplifting Easter event just for them. And let's see some photos of that event. I think it says more than I can. So Dr. Connor had volunteers prepare these Easter baskets and angels to hand them out to everyone. Weren't they beautiful? In addition, individual lunches were made for everyone, but all by volunteers under Dr. Connor's direction. There were games for the children. There was a puppet show presented to the kids. And from this very room right over there, we took games and toys for the children to have. I love this last photo. Um, Dr. Connor reasoned quite accurately that people not only lost their homes, they lost everything in it, including their family photos. And so she arranged for volunteer photographers to go up and take quality, professional photos of the families. This is one such family. After that, she arranged for those photos to be beautifully framed and then sent back to the families. So in summary, uh, not of the program, but of this particular segment, I wanted to, to encapsulate what under Dr. Connor's direction, what was accomplished. We did 91 trips to the area to serve the survivors. And keep in mind, this is at least an eight hour day for every volunteer that did this. We gave away over 58,000 pounds of food and 1,800 articles of clothing. We gave away thousands of dollars in cash, fresh new bills for necessities, and to put gas in vehicles, a very important thing. So there's no better way to hear 
than to hear directly from a survivor and one of our volunteers up in the Butte County area. So we'll hear from Terry Rubiolo, who's dedicated her life to feeding the homeless and continue to do that even after she herself was homeless. Then we'll hear from Brian Fredman, and Brian was one of our amazing volunteers in Butte County who found his places where people were holed up, and he found them all over the place. He also then got involved in taking food to some of the families that he grew to knew up there. So it'll, I think you'll enjoy hearing from both of them. Thank you. My name's Terry Rubiolo. My husband and I run I Am's Garden. We lost everything in the fire. We were serving our community meals and running a small donation center. We came back up and started doing it again as soon as we could. And White Pony Express was one of the ones that helped us do this. And our community has been totally blessed by this. They also sent up wonderful vegetable boxes and stuff that we were able to share with the community. So I just want to tell everybody thank you so very much for helping support Concow. And thank you so much for the generous hearts you have. Hello, uh, my name is Brian Fredson, and I live in Chico, California, um, the community that's literally at the bottom of the hill from where all of the uh, mountain communities were affected by the campfire. Uh, we're the community that the majority of the people ran to uh, when they were running for their lives. And uh, also ended up being the community that uh, Red Cross set up and you know, FEMA was here and Cal OES and, and Salvation Army and everybody was here helping. And uh, in order to get their help, these people had to come to Chico. And there were a lot of people that couldn't come to Chico. There were a lot of people that were still up in the mountains, uh, had spread out here and there as far north as, you know, Oregon and down south and all over the country, really. And um, it was White Pony Express that uh, made sure that they reached those forgotten groups of people. The White Pony Express uh, brought food to people all the way up in Concow and Megalia and, uh, you know, Yankee Hill, Jarbo Gap, Butte Creek Canyon, uh, out on out in the valley, out in Corning, all the FEMA camps, everything like that. And uh, I just wanted to say on behalf of my community, as a helper myself who made sure that I tried to find those people that weren't getting the help, that weren't getting the services, weren't getting the food, most importantly. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to White Pony, to the volunteers, to all the donors. Um, the food was, was the least of what you did. You showed up. You were always on time. You kept a schedule that people could count on. And once the food was brought, you were there to listen. And that was the most important thing for everybody. The, the food was the icebreaker, but to listen to people's stories, to go above and beyond by making sure that people that didn't have clothing got clothing to make sure that people that needed caseworkers were finding caseworkers to reach out to community members like myself who were out there helping and offer more support so we could keep helping because you know the smoke cleared and the the celebrities went home and the media moved on but uh white pony stuck with it and they were there every week with good food and an ear to listen and a shoulder to cry on. And so that means everything to these people that survived this terrible tragedy. And it means everything to somebody like me who wanted to do as much as they could to help. So thank you for that support. Thank you for everything you've done and thank you for everything you continue to do. And uh, you all are forever uh, honorary Butte County residents. You're always welcome. Open arms. Thank you. Thank you, Issa, for that wonderful review. It was a superb roundup of the impact that our volunteers and staff made on the situation in Butte County and beyond. 
Now I'd like to just take one second to ask anyone here who's, who's here today who's a White Pony Express volunteer or staff, if you might just stand and be recognized for a moment. Thank you, each and every one. And thank you to our new friends at AARP California for coming today and allowing us to share this orientation to your award for Dr. Connor and what a remarkable impact her leadership has had on all of us. With us today is AARP is Nancy McPherson, their California State Director. Nancy leads a team working to advance livable communities on behalf of AARP's 3.3 million California members and others who are over 50 and their families. We also have with us Michael Murray, the Strategic Business Operations Director for AARP California, who with Nancy make up AARP's state leadership team. We have Shay McCaslin, who's Associate State Director Communications for AARP. Shay has been so very helpful to us in developing communications for today's event. We also have to thank Rachel Stone, AARP California's program specialist. Rachel has been invaluable uh, primary contact with a, uh, AARP since this award was first announced. Thank you all very much. Now to present the award, I'd like to welcome Nancy McPherson, AARP State Director. Nancy? Good afternoon. Yeah, I was trying to, morning, afternoon. You know, I'm struck um, by watching the videos and hearing the stories of how important it is to have time for reflection, as well as the doing that really was the machine that moved all of the contributions forward. So today to have time not just for acknowledgement but for reflection I think is really important, certainly for our team and for all of you, I'm sure. So as, um, as the state director for ARP, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about why this award is so important. For those of you who may not know, AARP started 60 years ago. We're celebrating our 60th birthday this year under the leadership of another visionary woman, Dr. Ethel Percy Andrus. Dr. Andrus was born in the Bay Area in San Francisco, and as an adult, she went on to work in Los Angeles at Lincoln High School, where she served as the first female president, principal of an urban high school in California and she is still recognized at that school today. You see um, remembrances of her all over the campus. She found a former teacher who was living in a chicken coop because she could not afford proper housing, food, or health care. And this shocking incident inspired Dr. Andrus to devote the rest of her life to improving the lives of older adults. She first founded the National Retired Teachers Association in 1947 to help protect and advocate for retired educators. And that organization is still present today all over the country. And then in 1958, um, at the request of older adults who could see that the teachers were getting organized, said, we want an organization too. And she founded AERP and an organization that has continued to grow and serve older adults and their families for the past six decades. Today, AARP has offices in all 50 states, as well as the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, and a, a big national presence in Washington, D.C. On behalf of our nearly 38 million members nationwide and 3.3 million members in California, as well as all of those who are age 50 plus and their families. AARP staff and volunteers, over 5,000 volunteers in California, work to empower them to choose how they live as they age. Our organization is driven by Dr. Andrus's belief, and this is one of her quotes, that the human contribution that is 
that is the essential ingredient. And it's only in the giving of oneself that we truly live. AARP has long valued the spirit of volunteerism and the important contributions that volunteers make to their communities, their neighbors, and the programs they serve, starting with Dr. Andrus, who never took a salary for her work with the National Retired Teachers Association or with AARP. And this is why each year, AARP California recognizes an extraordinary volunteer and community leader in our state with the organization's most prestigious and visible volunteer award, the AARP Andrus Award for Community Service. In 2019, the AARP California office received 107 nominations from across the state. And these are from community leaders and from state legislators and other elected officials who are invited to submit a nomination. A selection team convened to review how each volunteer's work improved the community, supported AARP's mission of empowering people to choose how they live as they age, and inspired others to volunteer. This year, AARP California is proud to present the 2019 Andrus Award for Community Service to Dr. Connor, founder of White Pony Express. The, the judging team and then AARP California selected Dr. Connor for her remarkable service and for the significant impact that she has had and continues to have on the life of others, the lives of others. And I will tell you, I had the privilege of talking to people who were both staff, small staff, big volunteer army uh, at White Pony Express, um, and it's so clear how much you've touched their lives and how much they love you. During your career of service, you've mobilized people and you had resources that you mobilized as well to serve children and neighbors of all ages. Inspired by St. Francis of Assisi's example of selfless service to all humanity, Dr. Connor conceived the Francis in the Schools program as a way to nourish feelings of love, kindness, and courage in children from low-income inner-city neighborhoods. She also helped low-income families in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and launched a project in Washington, D.C. to renew a public park that serves underserved low-income residents. And the reason that we're here today, Dr. Connor founded the White Pony Express, which works to help those most in need throughout the state. When the devastating campfire erupted in 2018, Dr. Connor and volunteers were quick to act, as we saw from the stories that we just heard. The number of fatalities um, has already been stated, but let me break this down, um, why it's so important in relation to older adults. The fire which killed 85 people in Paradise and nearby towns took a heavy toll, particularly on older Americans, older Americans who are disproportionate victims in major disasters all over the country. Among the 84 known victims, six were in their 50s, 22 were in their 60s, 25 were in their 70s, 18 were in their 80s, and seven were over 90. And I think it is remarkable that a total of 70 older adult victims out of the 85 who perished. And certainly that caught the attention and commitment of our organization as well. In the aftermath, Dr. Connor and 182 dedicated volunteers, as we heard, made 91 trips. We saw the distance and heard the distance to the disaster area, delivering the most needed items to displaced community members. We heard this from food and clothing and cash for immediate needs. And cash cannot be de-emphasized. It is how people um, buy gas and take care of basic essentials that really aren't part of what survivors get when they're trying to work their way through a disaster. Her nomination said, 
Dr. Connor has faced this unprecedented and monumental disaster with love, fearlessness, and sheer determination. She has stayed the course. She and her fellow WPE volunteers have played an enormous role in helping feed, clothe, and support the fire victims most at risk. And they showered them with love and compassion. Carol Connor has made a profound difference in these survivors' lives. Dr. Connor, you not only responded to people's physical needs, but to their emotional and spiritual needs to overcome trauma and loss and to regain their dignity, respect, and companionship. You showed humanity when it was most needed. Her record of accomplishment and commitment during a lifetime of service provides an extraordinary example of the difference that volunteerism can make in the lives of individuals and in the well-being and vitality of a community. It's an, ex an example that inspires all of us to want to make a difference. ARP California is honored, and I'm personally honored to present you with ARP California's 2019 Andrus Award for Community Service and a $1,000 donation from AARP to the White Pony Express. We have a big check and we'll take a picture over there and the real check is in the mail. <laughs> And as we give this award, let's remember that her work enhances the lives of people of all ages and empowers them to choose how they live as they age. We believe this mission and focus is critical in providing help and inspiration in today's world where we need that so much. Thank you, Dr. Connor. So I'd like to, we can bring it down to you. This is our award. wonderful in vivo presentations of what happened in Butte County. We all feel at one with the people there, as one family. And that's what I'm going to talk about just a little bit. Now, in your excellent summary talk, you uh, spoke of how a moment of reflection can also be in order in the midst of the whirl of action that love foments as uh, you follow the uh, currents of love in your everyday life. You're busy all the time, happily. Uh, but there, there is a moment, too, for reflection. Always and ever, man has reflected on the importance of love. I thought I would put in abstract terms some of the underlying principles of the work that we do. And you here can pair what I say with real things that you have myriad examples of from your experiences there. That's the important thing. It's not the talk, 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 but it's the doing and the contact with others and the uh, one family that we, we all build together, the light we bring to, to, to Earth. So at its core, this is a work of love. There's nothing that love can't achieve, we learned. Didn't you all learn that? That you do every time you follow love. So I say that with confidence. And there's nothing that love can't sacrifice willingly. Best of all is the love that knows how to give without need or concern for return. That's what we did. That was most fun, we found. This is the central principle that lies behind all of our work, to give without thought of return. 
to give us a way of life. It, uh, everything works out then. Love is spontaneous, dynamic in action, and contagious in effect. It can never be too early or too late to learn to love. So also there can be nothing too small or too big to be sacrificed for love. We found that certainly in Butte County where the smallest things we did often brought a burst of inner sunshine on every side and made all the difference. Recently, a little girl who I could scarcely remember uh, ran up to me and she said, oh, I haven't seen you in a long time. Where have you been? She may have been about five years old or so. She said, I still have the little mouse you gave me. I sleep with it every night. I don't remember that little girl or the mouse, but she remembers the love that went with it that strengthens her life. So she goes to sleep with this little funny thing that, you know, children have of no, no special count. What was special was the love that went with it. That is exchanged uh, in, uh, in, in, in uh, exponentially in a work like Butte County. The flow of life, the flow of light, and the flow of love are as much in the smallest thing, aren't they, as in the biggest as love springs spontaneously from within, its nature isn't amenable to force, to being forced. It's awakened through love itself. That is how we learn to love, is to receive it from, from others. Then we automatically reflect it back, and the world is brighter. Essentially self-communicative, those who receive love can't be its recipients without giving a response, which in itself is the nature of love. Of course, we saw that among our, our family in Butte County and everywhere where we serve in this spirit. And so love is unconquerable and irresistible. It goes on gathering power and spreading itself until eventually it transforms everything it touches. This is our underlying hope aspiration and goal. In this way, we wish to hasten the coming of a new spiritual age foretold by worldwide authorities, an age characterized by inclusion, unity, and lasting happiness as one family of man. Uh, I thank on behalf of myself and those uh, who have worked with me the AARP, uh, on behalf of the volunteers of the White Pony Express, the many hands and feet who made this program possible, and our brothers and sisters who are its recipients in Butte County, uh, its donors. Their love and service is honored and amplified by this distinguished award. Uh, uh, And so the rest will be said silently. <laughs> so much, Dr. Connor. We will conclude our program today in just a moment after Misha sings one more song, some happy song. But before you leave today, we would be so happy if you're interested in the work of White Pony Express. If we, you would like to take a tour, we have this space and we have people who can give you tours here. And then on the other end of this building, we have our food rescue side and we would love to show you that. We have some tour guides here. Um, if you're a tour guide, would you just raise your hand and people can identify you? People over there and Jeff O'Hearn. Happy birthday to you. Yes. <laughs> um, so just uh, gather with uh, over there and over here, and you'll have a guide. And uh, we would just love to tell you more about our programs. So to know, today we will end our program as we began it, and that's with another original song that Misha will sing. 
When we share the abundance of our community with those who need it, we experience joy. And we want to spread this to everyone we meet and serve. We find that our volunteers and staff find they just feel happier when, when we help those who very much need our help. So this song invites us all to really just put your happy on. Ready? Come and put your happy on Even if it feels too tight Doesn't feel natural Don't worry, it'll be alright You say it's been a long time Since you've seen it anywhere You don't know where you saw it last It is lost in the past well, then we'll share. Come and put my happy on. You know it fits you like a glove. If you wear it long enough, it happy turns into love. You can wear it anywhere. You can wear it anytime. If you put your happy on, you can get along. No matter rain or shine. And the beauty you see is that one size fits all. Whether you are really big or you, or you are really small, you can pass it on without a worry or a doubt. No matter how much it's used, well, it just can't wear out. Come back, let's sing. You know this. If someday we meet and die, I haven't got my happy on. I'm out on Lonely Street and you wonder where my happy's gone. Maybe you will help me, love, help me to find my way. Share yours for a while Until I can smile And I chase my blues away Together we can try Oh yes Not to wear our misery When we put our happy on It's a better look you'll see We can wear it anywhere We can wear it anytime When we put our happy on And the beauty you see is that one size fits all. Whether you are really big or you are really small, you can pass it on without a worry or a doubt. No matter how much it's used, you just can't wear out. Come and put your happy on Let it shine, shine, shine With your happy on You will shine, shine, shine Don't want to wear no misery Don't want to whine, whine, whine I'd rather put my happy on So I can shine, shine, shine Together with our happy on we can shine, shine, shine all of the time. Thank you so much for coming. We'll see you around at the tours, and there's refreshments left over. Thank you.